After pulling up and parking my car in West Tyrellstown, I walked the short distance to my alternate car, a silver VW Golf. I took off heading straight for Willowfield. The closer I got the more excited I became. En route I noticed a quiet stretch of road, where I reached under the seat and pulled out my temporary disguise, which consisted of a blonde wig, large sunglasses, and a black trench coat. I pulled into a lay-by, first putting on the coat and glasses and then, after making sure no one was about pulled on the wig, made some small adjustments and resumed my journey. I arrived at my destination, Willowfield, twenty minutes after donning my disguise. In the glove box of my car, I found the remote control for the entrance gates which helped ensure total privacy and security, once in our little haven. A haven, in which I can become my alternate persona, without any fear of ridicule or retribution. I parked my car in its usual spot and climbing the elegant carved granite steps to the front door, which was typical of the Georgian design from when Willowfield was built. The house was beautifully maintained by all its owners, including its newest residence, GF Enterprises. The door opened to a lovely bright porch with traditional chessboard tiles, which led to the large reception hall with its high ceiling. My first call was to check into the office. Good morning, Bella. Nice to see you. How has business been for the last few weeks? Bella is one of my business associates who helps in the running of the operation. She is an accomplished cross-dresser. Quite petite, for which I completely envious, quite shapely and very passable in her dress sense and her mannerisms. Indeed, Bella and I have great respect for each other's advice on such passing matters. We shared the same philosophy, to blend in with society while appearing female. It was also our aim to help other CD-slash-TV-slash-TS persons to find their level of femininity in a perfect location with like-minded and experienced staff and friends. All these things are possible at GF Enterprises. Hi Sharon, quite busy, we have two members here this morning since 8 a.m., probably shift workers, looking to chill out and femme, Bella replied. Can I get you a cappuccino or tea? or are you anxious to get changed? She added with a cheeky smile. I am itching to get going, I replied. I have three calls this week and I also need my hair done. Did you book my appointment with Justin? Yes, dear, you'd kill me if I forgot. 3 p.m. is the closest available, Bella replied loudly as she made her way to the back office. What classes are Rachel and I scheduled to hold this week? I shouted through from the main office. Deportment and psychology, I think. They're fully booked too, was the typically efficient response from Bella. Tell you what, let me get sorted and you can debrief me before you go. Give me an hour or so, okay? I called back. Get beautiful. I'm in no real hurry, replied Bella. I quickly made my way to my room at the top of the landing, turned the key and reacquainted myself with its light and fragrance, shut the door, locked it and immediately set about transforming myself into Sharon. Hurrying, anxious to return to Bella as promised, so she could go home, but more importantly to at last, walk the rooms and grounds in my effeminate persona. I had the room furnished with matching French period pieces in white which consisted of a king-size bed with adorned head and foot boards, blanket box, bedside lockers, chai lounge, dressing screen, dress mannequin, small dining table with two chairs and a dresser and quilted chair. The walls were painted ivory white and the carpet was cream with some dark fleck throughout. On the windows were cream oak Venetian blinds with floor-to-ceiling ivory silk curtains with a deep purple fleur-de-lis design printed as if it were a climbing vine. The bed was covered in the most sumptuous dusky pink satin bedding, with a beautiful rose over pattern in black. I undressed and made my way to the walk-in wardrobe beside the end suite, which was opposite the bed, on the left as I entered the room. I sat at the table on which the diaphragm apparatus sat, waiting for me to connect up to it. It was a strange-looking machine, which looked something like a dialysis machine and a cappuccino maker. This very special device gave me my curves and lady lumps. It cost a lot of money and accompanied the surgical implants I had inserted into my chest and hip slash butt area. 
These implants were filled by tiny ducts under each armpit for the chest area and between the buttocks at the lower back for each buttock slash hip. The back ones took a bit of getting used to when connecting the tubes and once they were connected the diaphragm acknowledges the correct connections and starts the injection procedure. Before it starts, I have to ensure that I am completely naked and standing upright until the process completes. It takes 20 minutes in total to inject all four areas with the saline solution. The sensation is extremely weird if you can imagine yourself as a balloon being inflated. My skin has become very accustomed to the process and is kept especially elastic and subtle by specially formulated cream, which I must use daily. There is a drawback in that the tissue around my chest has become so stretched to accommodate the volume that when drained, leaves saggy pockets, which I cover up when in normal attire. My hip and buttock areas are also somewhat saggy when drained, but again I keep this area under wraps. I gaze out towards the window briefly, then at the fabulous range of outfits, dresses, gowns, wigs, footwear, accessories, etc., which surrounded me in the walk-in wardrobe knowing I will soon be able select one to wear while going about running the enterprise with my associates. I quickly remembered to use my lip plumper while standing there idle, which uses a vacuum process to suck out your lips creating a fuller effect. This must be done gently and patiently to prevent irritation around the mouth. After three to five minutes of this the results are quite amazing. While working on my lips, I also practiced resetting my vocal tones by trying to bring them a few octaves higher. I found a great technique which works for me, by humming a particular song, I always use Always Forever by Donna Lewis, and while doing this I bring my voice pitch higher and then I let it settle itself and this keeps me amused while my lips are getting sucked and stretched. Meanwhile, the diaphragm carries on sculpting. I then turn to review the progress in the full-length mirror. I like to give myself curves that complement my normal physique, which is average. This is normally a size 14 in clothes, which consists of 700 cc's in each hip area and 600 cc's to each breast. The device also enables me to size up or down, dependent on my mood or fancy. These settings give me a very curvaceous 38 to 30 40. Looking in the mirror again, I know the process is just about complete, without looking at any dials on the diaphragm. I notice that my nipples have been stretched to about twice the circumference as they were before I ever had implants, my excitement growing by the second. Both breasts resembled dried prunes when empty, but now both are smooth and jiggly. As if, on K, B, beep, sounded from the diaphragm, with the message, Procedure complete, please detach connections. I promptly did as advised and sealed each with their special latex plugs. I took another gaze at my reflection and was transfixed at how a pretty unexceptional male body was now curvaceous and voluptuous. Two final areas, above the neck and between the legs needed rapid work to complete the feminization. Shit, is that the time, looking at my bedside clock, which told me it was 8.25 and I had 35 minutes to get myself made up and dressed to discuss the handover with Bella. I mustn't keep her waiting, I thought to myself, as I took my satin dressing gown hanging from the dressing screen. As I tied it around my new waist, I became aware of how the fabric caressed my nipples. I estimated that I had 25 minutes to sort out my makeup and wig, maybe 30 minutes. I was pretty sure what I wanted to wear and getting dressed would only take 5 or 10 minutes tops. Thankfully, I no longer had to worry about body hair, the scourge of the crossdresser and indeed genetic females also. This was achieved quite quickly but painfully, where the hair on my body was epilated and then the follicles treated with callow, which if regularly applied, stopped the hair regrowth in each follicle. The result being that, while in my normal mode, I was no longer one of those hirsute males, made to look older by their body hair, but it didn't look effeminate either. However, because of this treatment and my exercise regime, I reduced my weight and toned my physique right down, so the final piece was the implants to change my body shape. I put on my wig cap which gave me some instant brow lift and secured in place. I quickly combed and glued flat my eyebrows and once dry, I applied a small coat of liquid latex. Once this had dried, 
I was ready for my derma blend, which covers a multitude of sins, but is effectively a new layer of skin. The shade I have is a perfect match for my skin tone so no blending or softening of makeup lines is required. I turned and skipped to the wardrobe, grabbed my favorite blonde full lace wig from its stand and sat back down at the dresser to put it on. I had mastered this process over the last few months, the tip being to go steady, gluing the front first and gradually working the rear hairline. I normally called to my hairdresser Justin in the town's premier salon to ensure the wig was secure for my needs. There, now dry my pretty, I whispered to myself as I set about securing my manhood by tucking in the time-honored method. Each testicle was gentle pushed up into groin pockets and with the help of a fashion nylon sock and some skin-toned kinesiology tape my shaft was securely taped back between my legs. Just the crown peeping out, for going to the loo. It was now 8.40. The lace was now completely secure all around my hairline, just require a little dusting of powder to blend the lace with my skin tone. I looked in the mirror and the reflection was a template any woman would see in the morning just before putting on their makeup for the day. I brushed my hair back and put on my hairband to ensure full view of my face for applying the final touches. Starting with the eyes, I penciled in some fine new eyebrows, similar to Marlena Dietrich or Goldfrapp, with a tiny arch. I then applied some liquid eyeliner, blending the top and bottom lines at the inner and outer eye, which creates an oval-type shape while widening the eye. Gently rubbing the lower line to blur slightly, I then apply the mascara. One coat then curl before it dries completely. I apply a hint of bronze shimmer on my eyelid and lip liner to my now pouty lips. The second mascara coat is applied, some cheek bronzer and done. Do my lipstick last of all. It's only 8.50. I make my way back to the wardrobe where I keep my smalls. Once I've found the bra and panty set required, I take off my robe and feel my breasts sway and almost pull me forward as I bend over to pull my panties up my smooth, silky legs. To add to the femme experience, I usually also wear a panty liner for comfort and realism. My lingerie is mostly silk and satin and I chose a matching set that are black satin with sheer lace front with a pretty bow at the waistband. The matching bra was underwired and the cups had the same sheer lace design, which was very comfortable as my CC size breasts settled themselves into the beautifully formed bra ups. My blouse was black and quite sheer with gathered shoulder detail and slightly puffed sleeves. The cuffs and collar were satin and the buttons were small and of satin also. I left the top three buttons undone as usual and then select my skirt suit. This was a charming Dolce & Gabbana black suit with pencil skirt, the matching blazer had sharp lapels with white piping, a gathered waist and slight flared hem, which helped accentuate my hips. Naturally, the lining was leopard print which felt luxurious as I pulled the skirt up my naked legs. I tucked in the blouse, fixed the rear button and zipper, then fixed the blouse at the waistband. My shoes were black patent quartz, with pointed toe and beige sole. I think a lady's court shoe with this color sole is the most stylish. Before putting them on, I put on my foot hose, to ensure that my foot slips in as if wearing stockings or tights. I'd stopped wearing hosiery lately, because I enjoyed feeling the air on my legs so much. Besides, my legs were so smooth and slinky, with all the care and lotions I regularly apply and the guys love smooth, silky legs. The last touches now. I selected some matching pearl accessories which included a necklace with large pearls, three-band pearl bracelet and button earrings, which replaced the silicone secret earrings which I wear while in normal dress. Finally, after a critical examination in the full-length mirror, I turned to the dressing table for my lipstick, which is a gorgeous dusky plum shade. I then see just how much the lip plumper extended my lips. I kissed some tissue paper and applied a second coat for durability. The last thing that any stylish lady cannot go without is a pretty feminine fragrance. My choice lately is a classic Anais Anais by Cacarel. I create a perfumed cloud above me by squirting five or six times into air, then step beneath it and let the perfumed mist cover all of me, yum. One final look in the full mirror, a chill of excitement ran up and down my spine, as gazing back from the mirror was a gorgeous, chic and beautifully groomed lady. 858, 
Quickly I grabbed my manicure set and blazer and made for the bedroom door, my senses become drowned with the renewed sensations of femininity. My breasts as they sway and jiggle to each step, the gentle sigh not a swish, as my legs rub against the lining of the skirt, so much so, that I felt my penis harden from arousal. It was a good thing that everything was well secured down there and the panty liner helped greatly. Down in a jiffy, Bella, I called down from the landing, as I closed the door to my boudoir.